What is up guys, it's Modded Warfare here and welcome back to another PC tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to bypass blocked programs to get them to run on your school, college or work system. Like something like maybe CMD is blocked or the registry editor is blocked or you know just a program that you want to use, maybe Tor for bypassing web filters might be blocked. This is something a lot of people have been asking me on my other PC tutorials on how to access um, or how to get access to admin accounts at work, college and school and how to bypass web filters at work, college and school. So I would thought I would follow this up with how to bypass blocked programs. So I've got a few um, kind of application blocking software installed on this computer. Um, one is pretty terrible, the other one's half decent and the other one is, the third one is pretty pretty damn good but it only works with things like you know, system processes like CMD and registry, it won't work with them, um, you know, other random applications. So for that reason, I'm going to use CMD as an example for this. So if I type in CMD and I try and access it, I just get a message saying that it's, you know, I don't have access to the command prompt. I don't have permission. So what we can do um, now, I know that for some school work and college systems, CMD is deleted completely from the computer. It's not even it's not even going to show up. If you type in CMD, it's not even going to appear. I'll cover that kind of stuff at the end, but for now I'm just using it as an example of a program that is blocked. So to gain access to it, what we can do, first of all, we can go to the file location. If you right click and go to open file location, or you just go to computer C Windows System 32 and then scroll down and find it. What you want to do is try and copy it to another location on the computer, somewhere that you have right access to, whether that's the desktop or documents or a, a network drive of some kind that you can copy it to. Once you've copied it there, try and rename it to a process that is allowed on the system. So a process that is um, allowed to run on the system. For example, Internet Explorer is normally allowed to run on school and college systems because it's just a web browser that comes with Windows. And the process name for Internet Explorer is iExplorer.exe. So if we rename this to iExplorer.exe, that might be enough for some application blockers, the really terrible ones, that's enough to allow it to run. Um, with this one though, it's a bit more advanced, it still doesn't let me run it. So. The reason for that is it's using a CRC match. It could also be using something like an MD5 check as well. So what that's basically doing is it's checking the application to make sure that um, it just takes the CRC from um, CMD and it says any other application on the system that has that same CRC don't allow it to run, essentially is what it's doing. So what we need to do is just change the code of the program just a tiny little bit so that it's it's not the same CRC as the program that's blocked, which is CMD. To do that, we can use a hex editor. Now, hex editors, HXD is probably the best one to go for because there's a portable version, so it has the best chance of running on a limited account on a school or work or college system. So I'll link it in the description. You just want to make sure that you are downloading the portable version. So if you type in HXD, you head to downloads and scroll down past the installable versions till you get to the portable version and download the portable version right here. If you don't, if you're not able to download at your school or work, then bring it in on a USB stick or something like that. From there, you can just open up hex editor. You can drag and drop your copied CMD into hex editor and then scroll down somewhere near the bottom where you're, where changing something is less likely to to completely corrupt the application. Um, down here we've got a bunch of zeros. If we just change the last one to something like uh, 09 and save it, because we've changed that one little value, it's not going to affect the rest of the application because I haven't changed anything here where something's actually happening. It's just all where there's zeros, so it's less likely that this is going to damage the application. And because we've changed something, now it will have a different CRC, it will have a different MD5 hash and it should be process blocker will not be able to recognize it as the same application as CMD. So now when we run it, it lets me run the application. So that is one way of bypassing blocked applications. Now, 
There's a few other things I know people will probably mention. For example, um, what happens if I cannot copy and paste CMD out of System32? Maybe copy and paste is disabled. Uh, control C and Control V hotkeys are probably disabled as well. So there's no way that you can get CMD out of System32. Um, other than bringing in CMD on a USB stick from your home computer, the other solution you can do is just drag it into hex editor and then save it, do a save as, and then save it to somewhere that you have right location to. So like the desktop or documents, and then you've essentially copied and pasted it, even though you don't have the option to copy and paste it. So that's one way to get around that. So yeah, that's basically, that's that. However, there's still a problem here because as you can see, if I try and type anything, if I press any key on the keyboard, it just closes automatically. It's just automatically closing, no matter what I do, it closes the application. And that's because there's a more advanced blocking software being used right here that is blocking the program still from running properly. So thanks to uh, Vegas395, who basically emailed me and, and showed me the the way to bypass this, which is pretty interesting. I didn't didn't know about that until he contacted me. But there is a way to bypass this as well within Hex Editor. So all you do, if you have a similar block, now normally this kind of block, when you run it, it normally what it's going to say is it's going to say the command prompt has been disabled by your administrator. It's just because we've copied and pasted it to a different location and we've changed um, we've changed a byte inside the application that it doesn't say that now. But if we were running this from System32, it would say that it's been disabled by your administrator. So the way to get around that, again, copy and paste it into your hex editor, search, find. This time you want to search for disable CMD. And it's a Unicode string, so make sure you tick Unicode string and click OK. And you'll find it here. All you have to do is change one of these um, digits or change one of these um, one of these bytes to something else. So if I change this hex value to 00, 0 instead of 44 and save it, now it should run perfectly fine. There you go, it's running absolutely fine. And I should be able to enter commands and they're working absolutely fine. Okay, so another thing you can do if you're an administrator, if you're not an administrator, obviously you can't do this. But like I say, I have tutorials on how to get, get access to administrator accounts. So if you're an administrator, you can then, once you've got command prompt open, you can then terminate the applications that are blocking, um, that are blocking other applications. So for example, right now I don't have access to task manager, but within command prompt, I can get rid of those applications. So if I type in task list, it lists all the processes that are running on the computer. So you can see that I've got process blocker running and TWC program blocker. So once you've identified the process that is probably the application that's blocking other programs, what you can do is terminate it by using the task kill command. So you type in task kill forward slash IM and then in quotations you put in the name of the process like process blocker dot exe space forward slash F and press enter and that will terminate the process unless you're on a limited account in which case it will just say access denied but if you're on an administrative privileged account it will get rid of it and then we can do the same with TWC program blocker and that gets rid of that and now if I type in CMD Again, it says it's disabled by your administrator because of uh, because of this tool, but you can see it's not giving me that error that it was giving me before because those uh, program blockers have been terminated. So that's it. That is how you basically bypass. Um, that's basically how you bypass blocked block programs at school, college, work, etc. However, there's a couple of other things I should mention. Number one, if the CMD is delete it completely off the system, then you'll have to bring it in on a USB stick, just copy it from your home computer. Although, although if you have a different version of Windows, 
uh, to the version that you have on your school or college system, then maybe at home you can create a virtual machine with VirtualBox and install the same version of Windows that the college, or the school or college uses, and then copy the CMD from that to a USB stick and bring it in to school or college, or bring it in on a disk if USBs are blocked or something like that. Um, another thing, some commands may not be accessible by doing this. I mean, so far, pretty much every command I've tried seems to be working fine. But with some 64-bit or with 64-bit versions of Windows, um, if you are having trouble accessing some commands, then what you need to do is go ahead and copy the ENUS folder from the from System32. So if you head back into the directory where CMD is, and you scroll up to the folders, so we scroll up to the folders here, and you look for the en-us folder. Copy that into the same directory as your as your uh, modified CMD, and then you should have access to all the command prompt commands if you didn't before. So anyway, guys, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions. Like the video if you liked if you liked it or found the information useful. I'll leave Vegas 395's video in the description, uh, as he did point out that method to me. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Shuffling